Hey guys, before we dive into the show, I wanted to tell you about the perfect trailer queue blueprint, which is 100% free and you could download it right now over at the trailermusicschool.com forward slash blueprint. Now this blueprint will help you to completely understand the structure of trailer music, how to build tracks that will be more licensable and have more impact and capture the right people's attention. So whenever you start writing a cue, make sure you've got this blueprint to hand and you can use it to help speed up your process, feel more confident that you've crafted a well-structured trailer cue before you send it off to that publisher or editor or supervisor. Okay, let's get into the episode. Hey guys, today I wanted to walk you through one of my tracks. This track is a neoclassical track that was written for a string trio, string quartet, that was to be sort of trailerized, aiming at drama trailers and documentaries and things like this. Uh, And it was used on the second and third act of the trailer for The Lost King recently, uh, which I love because... I'm a huge fan of dowsing, and Richard III was found using dowsing, uh, so this is this is awesome. I'm very excited about this. Uh, so what we're going to do first, we're going to watch the trailer, see how it's used, and then we're going to go into my track and discuss how I went about writing it, and etc, etc, etc. This one's going to be a fun one. You're very competent and valued, Philippa, but I've decided you are at the right level for you. Are you actually reading from an HR manual? No, no. What would improve things at work? A penis. You can have mine. Not really busy these days. What are you doing? You're coming to the theatre with me. My kingdom for all! I actually felt quite sorry for him. I'd quite like to visit his grave. There isn't one. You sure you want to join this group? You look quite normal. I'm not. Do you have any books on Richard III? We have eight titles. I'll take them. Which ones? All of them. I know you're some sort of apparition. I've been trying to work out why you're here. I wonder if it's because you're lost. I know I can find him. Who? Richard. Richard who? Sorry, uh, the third. The king? Yes. This is starting to look like an unhealthy obsession. I can't believe you just said that. I'm doing this for you. Plenty have tried and failed. Well, I wish you the best of luck. How can you possibly find him on your own? The key is in the city archives. All the information I need to find him, well, it's all out there. But I don't think anybody's brought it all together before. If your research is accurate, he's now right in the middle of a car park. You tell me what that letter represents. Just means reserved. Of course. I have the strongest feeling this is a very important historical site. A feeling is what you get when you sit on a bus seat that's still warm. I will fight you all the way on this. I want to dig for Richard. It's the body of an adult male. Boys, your mother's just found Richard III. And I'm here today to tell you a story about a person who is judged unfairly in life. Sorry, Graham, I can't help noticing your hair. It looks a lot like Rich the Thirds. Yes? (laughs) Okay, there we go. There we go. Right. Um, now I want to give you a little of a sort of backstory about the tracks that was, this was written for. So this was this was a collection of uh, uplifting neoclassical cues uh, with instrumentation of a quartet uh, or a trio, depending on the track. And the idea was to essentially give the editors lots of material with limited material. So what I mean by that is lots of edit points, lots of interesting uh, cut points with the the cue, lots of interesting arpeggios, interesting fills, uh, rolls, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to make this arpeggio-led track easy to cut with. And the thing I really love about watching this this trailer is that you'll see how they've used those. You know the digga digga dung, 
when it starts coming in. So my track comes in from when she says Richard the Third, and then it comes in, and then you've got all these lovely bum 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 before it comes in. So that it's really nice to see them being used as the way I intended them, which is basically like fun little fills between sections. Because what we're doing again is we're supplying tools for the editors, for the supervisors, for whoever's working on the trailer to make it fun to cut with and easy to cut with and to supply the mood. So I'm just, here's my logic file in front of me up here. Uh, the original track was called Passage of Time. I think it was called Peacock. I can't remember. The track names get changed so often. I, I very rarely know <laughs> what mine is called when it's released. So here we go. So the way I wrote these was using a quartet, obviously. And there's the file, which I have to tell you, I find that intimidating. I look at that and go, Ugh, scary. <laughs> but it's not. It's the essence of these cues is act one, act two, act three. Act one is how can I set the tone? Act two is how can I bring pace? Act three, how can I ramp up the scale? So what we're going to do is we're going to have a listen to the whole cue now. We've heard the trailer. We've heard how it used, how it was used. You just discussed how the elements that I created made it easier to cut to. And now we're going to listen to the track. so nice to see back to this because you know obviously with these tracks i write them we work on them we release them and i don't listen to them ever again so uh it's really nice to hear this now a couple of things the way i like to write these tracks is to, i like to think of them in terms of a compositional exercise obviously because they are uh, but i like to take a rhythm in this instance you can hear that rhythm here i like to take that and I like to see what I can do with it. Because you go, da -da 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 -dun. okay, so that's going to carry on. You can see the MIDI file showing you that pattern. One, two, three, four, five. Da -da 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 -dun. Okay. And then I say, well, then what happens if somebody else takes that line, the viola, but at a different time? So it's like, da -da 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 -dun. two, three, da -da 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 -dun. Dun. And then you take that, and then you put that in the spaces. But instead of it this time being repeated as exactly the same, da -da 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 -dun, you change it into a descending line. Da -da 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 -dun. 
and then this top line comes in too. And then you'll notice. Okay, so that's that's my 25 second act one, right? It's just this idea of what can I do with da 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 dun? How can I develop this into a track? Uh, so it starts in the cello, moves up an octave in the viola, stays in that octave, but you change it with violin two. Then violin one comes in bringing pace, which is here, you'll see. Bum, 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 just doing that. Then violin two jumps up an octave again. Octaves are your friend. <laughs> like, don't be afraid of just taking the motif and chucking up an octave. It meant that this rhythm, da 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 dun, could develop into an act one, feasibly. Uh, and then the end of act one, obviously you just go, okay, well, I want to ramp this up a little bit. I want to take this to the next level. So you say, okay, well, how about I just take that da 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 and just speed it up. Done. Okay. Uh, my idea with act two is usually pace. Obviously. Uh, and you can see I've gone, okay, well, how about we just make sure that the, let's see what the cello is doing. The cello keeps the pattern. Da -da 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 -dun. Okay. The cello keeps the pattern. The viola starts to supply the pace. Okay. Which is supported by the violin too. which still has elements of the da -da 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 -dun in it, but then I also use the pace elements here to bring in a chord sequence. <laughs> to hint at it. Um, now, I'm a huge fan of Steve Reich's, Steve Reich's clapping music and Steve Reich in general. Uh, so I like to have these type of rhythms going on. Really simple rhythms, but I put a simple interval in them. And just use that to express an ostinato, basically. Put them together. Okay, so here we go. This is midway through Act 2. And you go, okay, well, I, I've kind of expressed my idea. I want to step it up. So I'm going to add a point in for the editor here, which was used. Dun, 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 dun. As a way to bring in the next section. And the next section, you might notice, is the same thing, but I'm picking up on this chord sequence and fleshing it out with the rest of the strings. So the cello is still going, dun, 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 dun. Da, 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 dun. The first violin is still going. Da, 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 uh, well, the second violin might have taken that actually. Let's have a look. See, yeah, the seconds have taken that progression, and the firsts are uh, supplying a rhythm, but in that thing again. Dun, 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 da, 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 dun, dun, dun. I'm taking that rhythmic idea that I had at the start, and I'm passing it around the strings. There we go, it's another filling element. Okay, that bit there, again, it's like what I'm trying to do, it, with, with, it's not necessarily a stop down because it's not stopping, but it's a break. And what I use the brakes for is to ramp us up, is to change gear. So as you can hear. It brings us into this new pattern. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's the idea of the last section, is to take that chord progression. 
let's look at each individual aspect here. Okay, so we have the cello is now taking the rhythmic line. Dun, 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 it's just bringing in the the pace into Act Three. I've passed that to the viola. Now, the second violin is going, which brings pace and brings tonality. It brings the chord sequence to life. And bringing the first violin here, using the ascending ostinato, ascending arpeggio, it gives it the sense of like, ascending of going up it's it's really i love this stuff because it's really it allows you to express the simplest ideas and all that stuff i talk about with all the bigger stuff all the bigger trailer cues you can see in a much more condensed fashion here okay so that's my act three Another break. Okay, another break. But what I've done here is I've used like a descending, I was thinking of wedding bells, uh, descending and ascending arpeggios and scales in the rhythm of da 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 Ba ba bum ba 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 bum bum ba 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 bum ba ba which is what the cello was doing, which is what the violin two was doing, and now it's just going did it 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 and it just gives it this wonderful cohesion. Awesome. I'm really I yeah, I'm very proud of this track. I think it's it's really cool it got placed in such a great trailer and used in such a great way as well. Um so let's talk about the rest of the cue. So obviously, if I mute this stuff, all I've done here is layer in some bigger sounding strings, just as a layer. So I don't, we don't need to hear those because we know what they're doing. So now it's just my uh, percussion tracks, basically. I'm using uh, me playing... Uh, Colenio as the ticking clock sound and then I've double timed it in act three which is then supported by you guessed it sticks so we mute those it's just cinematic swishes and rolls these Tycho rolls are taken from the 8DO uh, hybrid hybrid hits instrument. Just drag and drop the rolls, the, the waveforms. And then, of course, one of my favorite things to do with this type of cue, the piano takes the bass line. So we have this. This is the original close samples, and this was the recording. So I just want to talk a little bit about the, the uh, these cinematic hits and transitions. This is trailerization, people. This is trailerization, you know, <laughs> making things seem bigger. This is a string quartet. Timpani roll, sub boom, with I believe, yeah, that's it. And then add in a, another taika roll that's kind of less impactful, more distant. You know, it just does all the job. And these guys, my sample libraries, I believe, ghost cello. Yeah, uh, my ghost cello, which is uh, a collection of me sampling myself playing ghost, uh, going playing harmonics on a cello. I don't know, I think it was ten or twelve times. Uh, played ever so slightly differently, laying the, layering them up, and then turning it into this. And each of these uh, knobs you see here are uh, 
different affected versions of the same samples. Uh, and then the same with this textured violin, uh, which is me playing really long, scratchy notes that have been turned into 10 pads. These are all available on, on the Trenor Music School website. So, what are your takeaways from this? You don't have to fill your pieces of music with a ton of ideas. You can just have a couple of rhythms. Maybe in one rhythm. Choose a chord sequence and use that rhythm in a, in a air quotes, clever way. Take that rhythm and say, okay, well, how can I develop this? How can I use this rhythm to create act one, to create act two, to create act three, etc., etc.? Just because you're writing trailer music doesn't mean that you have to think epic all the time. It can be small and intimate, just like this one. I hope you guys enjoyed me showing you this and how seeing how it was used in the trailer and seeing how I wrote it. Um, it's really nice for me to be able to share this stuff and for you to see it being used and from, for the stuff that I preach in all of my courses to be shown, you know, put those edit points in for the trailer editors so that they can cut your track in a more interesting way, giving your track more life and more legs. You don't have to have a ton of ideas. You just have to use those ideas in an economical way. And as long as you think in terms of act one, setting the tone, act two, setting the pace, act three, setting the scale, you can't go far wrong. Right. Thanks for watching and for listening, guys. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Amazing.